Sister Eleanor Craig. Thank you all for coming. And um, thank you for helping us celebrate in this way 170 years of Loretto work in New Mexico. We have, um, I've brought a candle from our mother house in Kentucky and I brought it along the Santa Fe Trail the same way our sisters came in 1852. And I'm going to light it now as a kind of symbolic way of saying the light of Loretto is again in this chapel. O suffering Jesus, together we hold in our hearts treasures of experience and stored up memories, looking to a bright future as we stand this moment in the chapel of Our Lady of Light, knowing her own readiness to ponder happenings that called for deep reflection. Let's listen to God's word and pray for the grace to continue responding gratefully and faithfully. A reading from, from Genesis. In the, be <clears throat> in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the abyss, while God's spirit hovered over the water. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. We ask for the gift of trusting that although there is darkness, light will follow. We ask for strength to walk courageously wherever the light leads. I came into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me might not remain in darkness. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, 
that seeing your good works, God in heaven receives praise and glory. Remembering the history that witnessed the courage of our early sisters just 40 years after our foundation to undertake the journey to Santa Fe, for your light which guided Loreto to so many places throughout New Mexico and beyond, for calling us to also be light to our world, As friends of Mary, we thank you for her beautiful role in bringing you the light of the world to this land. Amen. I'm Barbara Nicholas, president of the Sisters of Loretto and the Loretto community. It is my privilege to welcome you in the name of the Sisters of Loretto and co-members of Loretto. Together, we are Loretto community. Some of you may have had the good fortune to visit this beautiful chapel as I did in the early 1970s when Sister Carl Ann Herman welcomed all visitors. This chapel holds the spirit of all the Sisters of Loretto who have prayed here. Sister Carl Ann's warmth reflected the spirit. She invited us to experience it as we prayed. Then she invited us to climb those miraculous stairs that St. Joseph built. Even today, when climbing those stairs is off limits to visitors, this chapel carries the memory of much that we might call miraculous and holy. The staircase holds the story of the faith of the Loretto community in God's providence. We rely on that providence today, whether we are considering a staircase to be constructed or simply the next best step into the future. The film that you are about to view was created by Sister of Loretto, Eleanor Craig, and Loretto co-member, Neil Tucker. It recalls the history of the Sisters of Loretto in New Mexico, a history that many of you have shared with us and that continues into the present time. Thank you for the gift of your presence. The story was of a need of, uh, in this case, the need for education for girls in the Southwest. 
Somebody came to our community, the Bishop of Santa Fe, and announced what that need was and pleaded for our help. And we responded to it. In June of 1852, six sisters of Loretto left our mother house by um, stagecoach and wagon and traveled to Louisville, Kentucky, where they got on a steamboat called the Lady Franklin. They traveled down the Ohio and up the Mississippi to St. Louis, where they got off that steamboat, met Archbishop uh, Lamy, Bishop Lamy, and um, got on another steamboat, the Kansas, and came up the Missouri River to Independence, where they disembarked to form a wagon train that would take them the rest of the way to Santa Fe. While they were on the steamboat on the Missouri River, there was an outbreak of cholera, which was um, epidemic that, in 1852. And one of the sisters died of the disease while still on the steamboat. Two others were sickened. And uh, when the group was put off the boat because of the contagion, they, uh, the two sick ones uh, were in a tent for a week or more recovering, while the three sisters who weren't affected stayed with families in Independence. Then um, as, as the sisters got well and as the bishop got his wagon gear assembled, then all four sisters who were going to go on to Santa Fe reassembled in a tent on the outskirts of Independence. One of the sisters who did recover from cholera was too sick to go on and she returned to St. Louis and then went to Santa Fe in 1855, I think, or six. So her dream of going to Santa Fe was realized, but not that year. The four who traveled with the bishop in 1852 left Independence on the 1st of August and arrived in Santa Fe, New Mexico on the 26th of September without any incidents on the trail other than the intense heat and um, travel with long distances without water. But uh, there was nothing that um, threatened their lives and they arrived safe and sound and within several months had formed a school and accepted their first student. My third and fourth great-grandfathers actually ran caravans on the Santa Fe Trail from Santa Fe and Las Vegas. The Hispanic families educated their girls at home because there were not schools for them at the time until Bishop Lamy brought in the Sisters of Loretto. There were 10 in uh, Miguel Romero's family. My great-great-grandmother was the oldest girl and her two younger sisters were educated at Our Lady of Light Academy. Uh, so they had had some education at home. And uh, particularly the youngest one, Julianita, uh, had most of her education there and so did her daughters. Whenever the caravans would arrive in Las Vegas, uh, all the citizens would come out. The families were just so overjoyed that they were going to be able to educate their girls formally. Uh -huh. um, you know, as I mentioned, they'd been educating them at home. Oh, my name is Magdalene Hayden. I'm Sister Magdalene Hayden. There were a hundred students and there were four what we called Anglo students. This wasn't the only school we started. This grew quite rapidly and we you just, I think, didn't you go through Taos? Oh, okay. we had a school in Taos. Now that was at first just for girls, just like here, but eventually it became a school that had boys and girls. And then there was a little town called Mora, up even north of there. And then south of here, there's a place called Barnaleo. There's a place called Socorro. There is a place called Las Cruces. And north of here, Las Vegas, New Mexico, not the other one. Anyway, 
day. We had schools all up and down. When was this chapel built? We started in the 1860s. It was finished, really finished, by 1878. Could you tell us the story of the staircase? I heard the carpenters complaining that they weren't sure how they were going to do the stairway. I do remember that. And then I heard also that there was a young Frenchman that was working over on the cathedral that did know something about making a stairway that wouldn't spread out, but would, would go up. I remember that. I know there's a story that goes around. There's a story that goes around and says that a man came with a donkey and he said he could build a stairway. Well, I wasn't here. I didn't see him. So that part I don't know. So they tell the story and people come here, I think because they think that he built it and he could have. Also the Frenchman could have. Also some of the local men who worked on it could have. But you know, all I know is that later, later there was a German man he put the railing on, that we know, because we paid his bill, I saw his bill. I died in 1894, and they were talking about we had to have a bigger convent. So after I died, 1896, they started to build a three-story convent where the hotel is, and it faced out on the old Santa Fe Trail, which is the street out there. And then later, there was a grade school. And then later, there was a big high school that faced the street that the, the cathedral's on. As um, the property is now, that we still, the re chapel remains, this was the convent, and this was the music building. So what is was the whole property had other classrooms that are you can't see that were behind this. This particular area, which is one of the other, besides the chapel, the only remaining standing, and other than some of the the walls, was a school for kids with disabilities. And I love the fact that they called it the Opportunity School instead of handicapped or. But we, this um, kind of area right here was the playground. I mean, we had swings and teeter-totters. But all the kids from the elementary school and the opportunity school would all come out um, and have recess together. There were two sisters, two sisters of Loretto, like I am, who decided to have a school for children with learning disabilities. And so, First, the little buildings had been chicken houses. That originally, they were chicken houses. And so when they told whoever the superior was then, and I, of course, I was gone by then, that they wanted to have a school, she said, well, where are we going to put it? Where can you put a school? Well, they, had all, they were pretty smart ladies. They had already looked at the chicken houses, and they knew with a little bit of help with some more adobe bricks and a little cleaning up and a lot of painting and making it beautiful and they were they were very good teachers and they also knew that children who has have trouble with learning need some special love don't you know they said we don't need to be growing chickens anymore it was, you know, that was sometime, oh, I think 1930 or so, you could go to the grocery store and get a chicken then. So no chickens, no more chickens. They fixed it all up, and that was called the Opportunity School. We called it the Opportunity because it created good opportunities for some children. Wasn't that grand? This is Challenge New Mexico. They keep having events here on the plaza. This is for people with disabilities. So all these booths, they're, they're uh, raising money for people with disabilities. So what you might want to do is walk around to the booths and see if there's anything you want to buy there. We lived up in Chama, but our nearest Loretto community was right there in Santa Fe on Washington Street. 
And so if we came down to Santa Fe to do some business, we would always stop in to see our dear sisters. One very significant time that we were in Santa Fe, we happened to be, we happened to go over to the Shed restaurant and we were waiting in line at the Shed for our table and we hear these fire trucks come barreling down the road that's right there in front of the shed and it's close to the cathedral. So we go out to see what's going on. And of all things, it was the Loretto Academy was burning. And we went over to the convent, to Washington Street and we got our sisters. And we said, the, you know, the Loretto Academy is going up in flames. It was in the process of being taken down. It had been, the property had been sold and all. The amazing thing, I mean, it was, it was heart-wrenching, but the amazing thing, Eleanor, was that the wind was blowing so strongly that day that the smoke just went horizontally and the little chapel with our circular stairway didn't receive any water damage from the fire department, and it didn't get any smoke damage from that fire. It was incredible. And I got to thinking, I think I'd rather see this building go up in flames than simply to be bulldozed by people. Hello, I'm Sister Pauline Albin, a sister of Loretto, and I was at St. Francis School, St. Francis Cathedral School, hired by Father Reynaldo Rivera. And it was uh, quite an experience for me. I remember one time thinking I was saying the Hail Mary in Spanish and someone said to me, do you realize you said half Spanish and half Latin? <laughs> but um, St. Francis Cathedral School was quite an experience. Beautiful school with these paintings of the Canticle of St. Francis of Peace. I really uh, was impressed with Santa Fe. I loved Santa Fe. We, I did get an award from the State Department, and when I accepted the award, I said, oh, this is for all of the Sisters of Loretto who have ever been in Santa Fe. I was a student at uh, the St. Francis Cathedral School, and there were Sisters of Loretto teaching there, and then I was at St. Mike's High, and by then it was co-ed but there were Sisters of Loretto that were teaching there. So I was schooled by the sisters. The Franciscans and the Christian brothers and the Sisters of Loretto were all, all in partnership in the, in the cathedral school in St. Mike's. It was, uh, it was quite, a, quite a good experience. At St. Mike's after my junior year, or late in the junior year, I was setting up my uh, schedule for my senior year and I only needed two credits to finish and uh, the principal was insistent that no I was going to go to school all day and uh, that would be that. Uh, my father suggested that I drop out, get a GED and go to the College of Santa Fe which was a Christian Brothers College at the time. So it involved permission and um, my father had signed the, the slip and I took it in to Brother Ralph, the principal. He was unmoving and no, wouldn't do it. So I walked out of his office and Sister Kathleen was the guidance counselor and her office was next door. So I strolled into her office and she thought it was a great idea that I was going to college and she signed the, the slip. And as I walked out, Brother Ralph saw me leaving and I started running for my car <laughs> and ran right over to the College of Santa Fe and got signed up. I think it's kind of ironic that I ended up back on this property and so in my total 67 years I've had a shop inside the new hotel um, but I walk by the chapel every day and you know sometimes I think about the good old days and sometimes it's just isn't this a beautiful structure that I get to see every day or I hear the church bells as I'm going in it's like Cinderella ah the bells are ringing I better hurry up and get to work um, but I think the so between 39 years and five years, I've been on this property for a long time. So it's um, held a special place in my heart just because I've, I've been here for so long. It's wonderful that you're here. I was in Santa Fe for several years. 
I was uh, working with the, in the health and environment department when it was two departments then. And then I was uh, the founding director of the Women's Spiritual Center, and which was interfaith and um, multicultural. I also taught in high school there, uh, taught Spanish, also taught in the community college. So some of you may remember me. I remember many of you, and I'm so glad you're here today. And thank you so much for coming, all of you friends of Loretto. What do I know of territory, God? My geography holds counties, states, settlements along meandered roads, and the way a creek can carve a boundary. It's not the role of leaving that I dread, but the tease of wondering and the fear of no cartography. Territory troubles me, so I seek maps and compasses and all the tools of certainty from you because the trackless sweep ahead almost overwhelms my heart. Transform the territory into acreage that I can grasp, land or district, area, some parcel, not as vast as all the sky. I know Missouri rivers, Kentucky knobs, a sketch of redbud in the spring, trees whose branches roof a road in atlas of dimensions I can measure. O oh God, convert immensity to scale more the size that I can calculate the way fences can be charted, or garden plots, or a stand of cedars. Transform the journey till its end, when horizons at the edges of the earth become the territory of my heart. <laughs> 